We did a like a remote panel last yeah. time to see people in the rooms. Is, oh, I missed it. Missed it. <laughs> so, um, for the longest time, if people assume Superman is kind of considered the Boy Scout, your friend, grand, your dad's hero, but sure. I really, in the last year or two, really come to appreciate him. Thanks in large part to um, Ted Lasso. I love that you know positive masculinity. And it was very, I was reminded so much of what you bring to it, very much what Jason Stake is, making this kind of positive character yeah. relatable. But they also have vulnerabilities. I'm curious how you made your Superman not bland or you know, really dynamic. That's no, no, a great question. To, to me, uh, I always kind of bumped against people that where their biggest critique of Superman was like, he's unrelatable because he's invulnerable. He can do everything. That's not like, you know, the rest of us in the planet Batman, far more, you know, there's more demons. That's the character that you love. And to me, that Superman always represents what the, each of us are capable of, what the best of us can be. It's very much Captain America in that way, right, right? Which people consider old-fashioned. Mm -hmm. I don't buy into that because while the man has the responsibility of the world on his shoulders, the great thing about this movie is that it shows that when your son needs you, you have to be able to go macro but also micro, right? You have to come down and focus on your family, whatever's happening under your roof, and make sure that you can prioritize really the thing that should matter the most to you in the world, which is your son, right? And that's that's a that's a wild concept, right? Especially for a man that can see a tsunami in Japan and you know, there's you know, watchtowers falling out of the sky. So to me, being able to show that softer side, that empathetic side where his walls come down, that was really important for me. Which one of his powers, Superman's powers, would you want in real life? Oh, man. Just, just one, though. Well, so I always go kind of funny with it, and I say invulnerability, because I would just throw myself off a tall building. <laughs> <and> like, ah! <laughs> I'm fine, yeah. But, you know, everybody thinks, like, you wouldn't take flying, but the first time you go drunk flying, it's going to end bad. <laughs> you don't have that invulnerability. It's, 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 it's no good. It's a wreck. That's right. <laughs> It's a great name. <laughs> I thought about this. <laughs> no heat vision, right? You sneeze, your feet go off, that's it. You know. Oh, yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. I guess with invulnerability, you could fall a lot. It feels like flying. So. Yep. yep. Is there an interpretation of the character you kind of draw towards? Because, I mean, this character's yeah. been reinvented like every 10 years. Yeah. I, uh, you know, I was in my briefs and blanket and jumping off the couches in the 80s from the Richard Donner movies. Christopher Reeve is always my my omphalos, the, the center point of it all. I watched every episode of Smallville in the early 2000s. Yeah, Smallville! So I, yeah. I'm willing, I love... Um, I love I love what Henry Cavill's doing. Jerry O'Connell, obviously, was a fantastic voice, in my opinion, as well. But more than trying to emulate what those guys had, there's always like a, uh, a couple of qualities that are in that voice. And there's always sort of a booming register, a genuine sound to them as well. And Wes Gleason, our voice director, is always so great about going like, hey, I brought you in for a reason. He's like, you've got the sound. Just don't try and do too much because Superman, at the end of the day, really is just trying to figure out who he is in the world every day, right? No matter what the situation is. He was like, what I want from you is, he's like, think of your son, right? He knew I had a, a three-year-old at the time and he was like, don't try and talk to Superboy or Jonathan Kent or any of that stuff. He's like, let me hear you talk to your son and hear what that sounds like. So that was pretty special. Yeah, my, my buddy Troy Baker plays Batman, and we were like, oh shit, Batman, oh shit. <laughs> and our sons have, were actually born two months apart. So, yeah, we were saying, like, hey man, we can keep this DVD on lock. The first time there's an argument, we're going to put them on and be like, listen, your dad's Superman, your dad's Batman. You guys need to act right. <laughs> you need to act right. <laughs> Shape up. I think it's a great point that, that Wes brought into the voice direction because you, when you're playing Superman, you want to speak with authority, but right. Superman doesn't view himself as an authority. Right. Um, you really want to speak more from empathy. So where do you find your voice physically? Do you find it in your chest? Do you find it in your throat? Like, where do you approach the, the care and benign nature of Superman? Yeah, it's interesting. Like, Superman is someone that never has to push, right? If he does, bad things are going to happen. It's more about... You know, restraining himself, keeping his power back. And I think if he's dealing with a threat, there's a different presentation of that sound. There's more projection, it's in the throat, there's a sternness that comes with it. Just you, you know, the uh, whoever he's facing understands, you know, who they're dealing with, right? Clearly and concisely. But I think at home, it's about softening it and brings it back into your chest. You want to make it warm and inviting and not something that feels, um, 
like you're squaring off or, or, or putting yourself against Jonathan or whoever it is, right? You want to you invite someone into the conversation. So it's a little softer and just becomes uh, more of a chesty sound. Um, sorry. Um, so um, I was, didn't realize until I was um, doing some research, you and Laura, before Funimation, knew each other. Like, um, you are coming up as actors, and then, you know, she got Funimation, um, she didn't get you it, and you had to come in, you asked her. That's right. And it's right. very much parallel. Like, Funimation is almost like your own Daily Planet. <laughs> yes, there's a lot of talent going through uh, Funimation, just like the Daily Planet. Troy was there as well. Uh, <laughs> like, I think Laura started in 1999. I got my first gig there in 2002, I think. Troy was 2004. So, yeah, you could call out the Daily Planet. I guess there's a Wayne Enterprises out there somewhere. Maybe. <laughs> you know, maybe, yeah. I'm curious if that your your actually real life relationship um, marriage you brought you were to bring that in to performance. Oh yes, I mean we still had to record independently, both because of you know lingering COVID restrictions and also just because schedules are hard to get everybody in the room at the same time. But we record it once and then we always come in for pickups or ADR. The best part was when I got to hear Laura's lines because it changes the way that I read things. Right, if we're you know, putting on a voice or a sound, that's one thing, but to hear her be natural and then also kind of giving Clark a little, like, what for on the thing. She's like, oh, it's speed vision, what else? You don't know? I'm like, I don't know. And it, like, it puts me on my heels a little bit, too. So it just keeps it real. Um, and then uh, when I heard her speaking to Jonathan, it also makes me just think of our son. It makes you soften the read a little bit more, and I think just brings a real... Authentic, authenticity to the, to the point. Yeah. Did you two kind of just outside of the booth talk about uh, some scenes and things like that? A little yeah. bit, yeah. She went first and I asked her like how it was and you know what she thought of the character. I asked her if Lois smoked and she's like, no, she's just got the cigarette lighter. So, you know, we asked all the like fan questions, you know, have you seen the character description uh, or, you know, what the actual design of the character looks like because for me that's, that's where I start to nerd out. We were doing the sessions and I asked Wes, I was like, can I see see what the show looks like he's like I'm going to show you on my laptop don't take, don't take any pictures and I jumped him out and took a picture <laughs> um, but you know the, the look of it's great and uh, you know we were talking afterwards and I was like hey you sound really good she goes you sound really good and I was like we sound like parents <laughs> yeah. is, there, is there an area in the script that surprised you about Superman like you know everybody thinks you're really going to die was there a part that was written in there and you were like wow yeah that's a great that's a great question I think I was actually the most surprised about how quickly he went to Gotham City like with that relationship between he and Bruce is like I thought it was fascinating that as they have sons that there would be an effort to relate to each other in that way I also loved how flat Batman was when Bruce was to Damien like there's a have you guys seen the film yet yeah, yeah. Screen, you have? okay okay there's a great moment where he tries to relate to his son Damien in the way that Clark clearly shows concern for Jonathan <laughs> it's just on totally different levels, but I love that the two of them are going to be like, are going to be dads together trying to raise <laughs> the next generation of superheroes. <laughs> My wife and I take each other real seriously. Yes. <laughs> Downstairs, you'll get those after, yeah. So, uh, last thing, I heard that you guys were filming a lot during the pandemic. Yeah. What are you guys working on right now? Because you guys do these with a long lead. Are we going to hear oh, you yeah. again? I don't know, and you know, it's always up to DC. We, we take anything that they'll throw us, but uh, we're also doing season two of The Legend of Vox Machina on Prime Video, and it's great because, yeah, now a third season. Yeah, that show was awesome, yes. Yeah, but you know, we, we're working out of our closets, and it's worked so far, so we're in there comfy with all the sweaters. Awesome. Can't argue about the That's right. Yeah, yeah, no commute. And no showering if you don't want to. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you.